lifting the curtain. One afternoon, Donald took a supplies train to the works. Henry, awaiting final repairs on his tender, smiled warmly. Hello, Donald. How is everything? Dudley getting on all right? Aye, I suppose. But I canna say the same for Bear. Donald explained about Bear's mishaps and Dudley's behavior. It doesn't add up, he continued. It's no like Bear to act in such a way. I'm awfully suspicious of Dudley. Henry grew stern. You must tell the Fat Controller at once. I'm all too familiar with this sort of situation. Henry recounted the events of Diesel's stint on the railway. You didn't say, gasped Donald. He even tried to lie about me. We caught him, but only after Duck went to Edward's station. If Dudley's not stopped, Bear could be sent much further away. By the sounds of it, he's already got his coupling hooks in Gordon and James. Donald was pensive. Leave it with me, he said, and hurried back to the shed. When Donald returned, he found Bear all alone, staring solemnly at his buffers. Maybe the fat controller shouldn't have kept me, he sighed. Rubbish, retorted Donald. You're an outlier in a world of devilish diesels. I know you didn't have any ulterior motives. Our new pal, on the other hand. You mean... You don't believe Dudley? Bear asked, hopefully. Donald recounted his conversation with Henry, and Bear smiled thankfully. And here I thought I was all muddled in the radiator. The question is, how do we prove he's behind all this? I know just the thing, Donald winked. The next day, Dudley was dozing at the shed. Donald was shunting nearby, when Bear came excitedly along. I say, Donald, he said loudly, where'd you put the coaches for the VIP train? Near the station, Donald replied with a grin. They're ready and waiting for you. Excellent, said Bear. I'll be off then. Must be spick and span for our special guest. A special guest, eh? smirked Dudley. Bear was waiting in a siding for his driver to return, pretending to be asleep. He heard the rumble of trucks rolling past, accompanied by deep puffing. When the sound died away, he opened one eye. The trucks sat on the points, blocking him in. Worked like a charm, he chuckled to himself. Meanwhile, Dudley skulked around the sidings by the big station. Special coaches, special coaches, he thought. Where could they be? Over here, came a voice. Dudley perked up and hurried towards it. Into a siding he swerved, and waiting for him was... Well, hello, grinned Toad. You must be Mr. Dudley. You're not a special coach, Dudley growled. I never claimed to be one, sir, Toad replied in his chipper manner. Oh, were you looking for some? There's meant to be a VIP train, snarled Dudley, and I'll be the one to take it. A VIP train? That does sound thrilling. Dudley looked back in amazement. There was Bear. Y you? Dudley gritted. How'd you get out of that siding? I helped him, said Donald. Question is, how'd you know he was trapped? Dudley went pale. I, uh, well, that is to say, I... An excellent question indeed, Donald. I'm most curious to hear the answer. Well, Dudley, shall we have the truth this time? The engine's bewildered face twisted into a wicked snarl. Yes, it was all my doing. I'm still an engine in his prime. Why should I face the prospect of scrap? 
Oh yes, we've all heard of the sanctuary that is the Fat Controller's Railway. A haven where steam will always have a place. And yet, there still appear to be rats among us. I've proven my worth. Surely you wouldn't send an engine to his end, sir? The Fat Controller pondered. No, Dudley, I wouldn't. Dudley smirked. And I wish you luck in finding a new home. However, it won't be here. You... you can't, Dudley gasped. Deceit has no place on my railway. I welcome any engine, steam or diesel, who shows that they are both useful and honest in their work. I hope you learn to change your ways. Perhaps then you will find what you seek. I politely ask that you leave at once. There was silence. Donald and Bear stood with bated breath. At last, Dudley gave a sinister smirk. <laughs> Perhaps this railway isn't any different after all. You call this deceit? Ho ho ho! My dear sir, it is survival! The only thing that matters in the age of scrap. Well, you've won the battle, but not the war. I'll take my leave at your request, but you will remember me. Bear and Donald moved silently away, freeing Dudley from his siding. He puffed crossly backwards. Pleasant journeys, Mr. Dudley, called Toad cheerfully. Dudley gritted his teeth. The fat controller fought to keep his composure. Dudley was soon coupled to a long line of wagons. Bear and Donald watched from the platform as he stormed away with much hooshing and huffing. Into the setting sun he puffed and disappeared on the horizon. I do feel some sympathy for him, sighed Bear. Scrap is a prospect no engine wants to face. Do you reckon he'll change? Can he say, replied Donald. But with what he said to the Fat Controller, it might be too little too late. Bear said no more, but couldn't help feeling Donald was right. Life returned to normal on the Fat Controller's railway. Henry came home from the works and gave Gordon and James quite an earful. They shamefully apologized to Bear at once. Bear was a much happier engine after that. He worked hard and always lent a wheel to engines in need, though still friendly to visitors. He had no reservations about putting snooty diesels in their place. The steam engines agreed that made him very useful indeed. But what of Dudley? No one knows for certain. He seemingly disappeared after leaving the island of Soda. Perhaps he changed his ways and found a new home. Many diesels on the other railway will tell you that on misty nights, the hoarse puffing and deep whistle of a steam engine can be heard rumbling through on its way to the Fat Controller's Railway. I wonder if the diesels are right, don't you?